to life. Yeah. Like how does one person register a domain name via the Ethereum yeah. name service and okay. how that maps yeah. into IPFS content? Yeah, so like ETH domain is actually you can buy from this site. Yeah. And it's like five dollars per year. And then, so it's first come first up. So you just buy it here. Yeah. And after that, um, let me <laughs> try to make it a bit smaller. Because right. I can't see the important bits. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So here, uh, I can't make it small. <gasps> no, Ta -da! what's happening? <laughs> yeah. But there's a side where usually uh, here you can put the address. Yeah. And if you go scroll down, you can actually see the content which has an IPFS hash. Okay. So usually if you click that, it goes to the IPFS gateway. Right. But we, we have a special mapping that can, yeah. if you go to matoku.is.link, yeah. it shows the IPFS content hash. But okay. for this science fair, we made a special Wi-Fi network where it can resolve yeah. imaginary top-level domain called .eth. Okay, got yeah. it, got it. Because it's still not a globally registered yeah. top-level domain. Yeah, we don't, no Are one you? owns it. It's like owned by Ethiopia. Right. Without for Ethiopia, so we have to ask to them, like, okay. can I have an ETH domain? But is it going to happen? Do you think it's uh, going to happen? Probably, maybe, yeah. Okay, that, that, would, that would be awesome. All right, so when you change a hash, when you change the content hash, does that make a transaction in the Ethereum blockchain? Uh, what so happens? What is currently, the process? How do you currently, it's, hash? currently, it only supports IPFS. Right. So, like, if you change the content hash and it changes, you have to basically update from from ENS manager, so which oh, causes right. uh, a serial transaction. We are currently have one pull request to support IPNS. Okay. So once IPNS is resolved, then like it, you don't have to change every time IPFS actually. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, it's coming. Yeah. That's that's very cool. So where do you think is the strength in the integration between ENS and IPFS? Uh, where do you think we can go together? Yeah, I think uh, when we like, talk about ENS, people usually think about Ethereum to resolve Ethereum address. Yeah. But it's a very common question, like how do I have a like decentralized web? And the people initially ask like, oh, maybe I should resolve my IP address today, yeah. but that's not, that's not. <laughs> you have to put IPFS, right? Then they exactly. put it so Yeah, this, because there's yeah. a difference between Finding content by its location and finding content by yeah. its the content itself by yeah. authenticating the yeah. content itself. And I think this is quite good to appeal to the any like front end and JavaScript developer because yeah. they some of them unless they have a Node.js skill yeah. they are more into front end so they don't they are kind of less confident managing server side handling lots of traffic. But if right. you upload this front end uh, app into the IPFS, they are kind of free from like hungry in a server load because IPFS right. you know distributively manages. So I think there's a great, great appeal to any developer who's not necessarily into all this decentralization yeah. but easy to basically administer and manage yeah. their content up in a massively scalable.